After a shaky return to the public eye, influencer Gabby Hanna has released her newest independent rock song, Rewired, along with a self-produced music video. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I meant official visualizer, which I guess is like a music video that you don't have to try too hard on. But the thing is, Gabby could have made a better music video and still not tried that hard. And I'm going to prove it. I spent two hours last night planning my own homemade version of a music video to Gabby Hanna's Rewired, and I'm giving myself the next 20 four hours to complete it. Simply to show you how I would shoot a version that trades in Gabby's too simple concept, cringy choreography, and tired interior design trends for a more discernible storyline, at least some complex sense of symbolism, and a little bit of my own personal trauma to go along with Gabby Hanna's intense and honest lyrics. When I jump on the track and add my own vocals, it does not go well. <laughs> But as far as the video goes, I'm still so confident that I can make a better version of what Gabby Hanna did that I'm already stating it before I even go ahead and shoot it today. Why you ask? Hubris. But also because I know that most of the time in filmmaking, good things come to those who plan. Which is what I plan to show you today in a hands down installment of Clip Breakdown. <gasps> Clip Makedown. This is our first ever installment of Clip Makedown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Makedown. It's a spin-off of Clip Breakdown where we are going to review this homemade music video and then go through the creative process of doing it my way. I wanted to do something fun and originally time-saving for this video, not the way it went because I've been focusing on this a lot more than I thought I would, but I'm having fun. That's the most important thing. So before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also click that subscribe button if you want to see even more videos like like this and let me know if this is fun to watch. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon. Let's get into it. I wanna say up front, as I mentioned in the intro, Gabby Hanna's song Rewired is good. You should go stream it and check it out on her YouTube channel for the audio version. I've covered Gabby Hanna's music videos before and I like a lot of her songs, as I've said. It's the videos that I often give my criticism on. And this is no exception. I loved the song. The video is like straight up nothing. Let's watch a few clips and I'll give you my analysis. Oh, and Lord, please forgive me. Don't put me in the stockade if I continue to accidentally call her official visualizer a music video. I'm just trying to learn her art language. <laughs> So from what I can tell, it seems like Gabby Hanna got out of visiting her family on Christmas Day due to a bleaching her own hair disaster. I'm turning this around so people can't look up my Starbucks store number. <laughs> As for this makeup that she's drawn on herself, I usually rock something very similar when I get a new liquid eyeliner pen that I can't stop testing out. So yeah, this seems to be just shot in a yellow lighting room. <laughs> Look out everybody, cause Gabby smokes pre-rolled joints that she legally bought from a dispensary. And apparently she stole those shoes. Now what is that old timey clown gonna wear on the Judy Garland show? Oh, this video is three minutes and a half of two outfit changes and a lot of the same dances you see Gabby do on TikTok. Moves such as the My Chemical Romance gesture. I chimed in with the haven't you people ever heard of. <laughs> Milady chimed in. <laughs> also, the jerk. That's one that she does on TikTok all the time. But now it's a little overdone. It's like you just kick backwards. That's the running man. But I think the jerk is like that forward. Oh, Gabby, I don't care. <laughs> Next up. I've searched through every single nook and cranny of my cerebral cortex, and I still can't figure out one reason why Gabby Hanna would want to upload a video of herself wearing trousers that look so diapery. That cannot be intentional. Those pants make her look like a racist depiction of Ellen DeGeneres in a North Korean propaganda film. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you're not watching enough North Korean propaganda films. <laughs> It fell. It was a good excuse to shoot this video because I'm gonna make a mess of my apartment based on my plans so far. Okay, the current time is 3.25 and I'm getting ready for the biggest setup. So hopefully things will go a little faster after this. I had to clean out the fridge. I was prepared to move a lot of furniture today. That's like the biggest thing about shooting. How beautiful. I didn't even plan 
for this to be so beautiful. But those are gonna look so good on camera. It's all coming together. I've got my bubbly in there. I love adding these little personal touches for you guys. I hope, I hope everyone recognizes them. We'll watch one more clip and then I'll take you through what we're doing. As usual, this dancing looks very cathartic. Haven't you ever tripped over your comforter a little bit and called it art? Because that would be your right to do so, as we just saw. I only just started looking at a few things from Gabby Hanna again, and I'm already tired of seeing that dark green accent wall covered in gold frames that she has in her bedroom. I mean, 2018? It's making me sick from through the screen, so I can't imagine how she feels sleeping next to it. If she really likes it, that's great for her, but if it were me, it would be time to repaint that wall and then go ahead and report the Pinterest board that inspired it for containing hateful imagery. I only could show you literally several seconds of this video because if you've seen a few seconds, you've seen all hundreds of them. Because I talk about this in my music video clip breakdowns, there needs to be some sense of building and like reveal if you want the visual to match the song structure, right? Like Gabby cares a lot about writing her songs clearly because I've been reading these lyrics a lot. I find them really relatable and it also has a sense of story to it. In fact, this is how the creative process basically started for me. I just sat down with the computer last night and I listened to the song and tried to just pull out any of the themes that stuck out to me, as well as uh, just kind of make my own personal connections to the song and associate the lyrics and the mood of what she was saying and her vocal performance with things in my own life so that I could try to use that to influence what I was gonna put on screen. I think this is one of the most fun and relaxing parts because you're just sort of like throwing stuff at the wall and if you're a collaborator working with producers and directors this would be potentially a good chance to bring them in although I'm doing this alone because it's taken me one day but in any case these are the themes that I first pulled out you hear right in the first chorus fire and water so you get these sort of opposing natural elements you can walk on water I can bring the fire so it's also kind of giving me this heaven and hell and the first verse is very like desperado I don't know it has almost a country feel when I was recording lyrics I had to stop myself from being like I'll walk the boat Boulevard. I walk the boulevard of broken hearts and stolen shoes. The song is much higher <laughs> than I'm able to sing, and so I was screaming it. You, maybe you can hear how raspy my voice is. But with all of the finagling I did with vocal effects and stuff, I got something that I'm pretty happy with. The boulevard of broken hearts and stolen shoes. I'm still gonna bring up the mix on Gabby's vocals in the bridge because I sound bad there and I need her help. But what I have is good enough for us to lip sync to throughout the day's shooting. By the way, just re-recording this song gave me an entirely new respect for the sheer amount of music that Gabby Hanna produces. She worked on this song with producers Liar, L-Y-R-E. Seems like they produce exclusive background music that's customized for their clients. And then and I would imagine that Landon Tours here is the vocal producer, like helped her record the actual vocals over that track. In order to re-record it, I brought the whole file into Adobe Audition. With it, there's this effect called karaoke track. It's a really easy filter to use that just kind of finds the vocals that are center balanced between the left and the right speakers. Usually for a pop song, the lead vocals are in the middle and the backup vocals are on the left and the right. So this is, able to kind of try to remove the vocals using that method and it worked pretty well. <laughs> can still hear Gabby's echo in a little bit of it, so it was throwing off my timing. So I then added in another drum beat that I felt blended everything together and made the drums feel a lot more crisp and sharp and gave me a lot better of a tempo to work with. But now back to the creative and the themes of the song. There's also this idea of internal change that I pulled out of it. For example, her video is all inside of one bedroom. So it kind of gave me this like idea of it being a claustrophobic space or like, then I think about my home and it's like, sometimes it feels like a prison to me. Sometimes it feels like a jail cell and it's messy and I feel like I'm festering and I'm isolated. And then other times it feels like a cocoon, you know, where like I'm coming home to recharge and rest and like I can hide away from the world 
world and you know I have my therapy from home now so it kind of feels like there's healing in that as well as the ability for it to be out of control and make me feel isolated so I want to reflect both of those things in my story so here are my settings that I'm gonna use in the apartment we've got the entryway where I picture myself coming in to the apartment a symbolic representation of me at my lowest I want to be tear stained and gross looking it's really easy to look like you are crying make sure everything is blended <laughs> The makeup looks are gonna change a lot in this. Gabby doesn't change her makeup, I don't believe, in her video. That's one great way to symbolize time passing and day changes to your audience. Ooh, pretty. So I'm gonna be spending a couple hours today coming up with new makeup looks, and that's okay. I'm excited about it. It subconsciously makes it feel like, oh, this was shot or took place over many days. That makes me think they tried hard, budget. And I'm not saying Gabby needs to make all of her music videos as big as the ones she used to with rented studios and locations. I understand if you wanna go more small scale, but here's how I would do that. In fact, for this video, I'm using only on-hand materials. I'm not going to Walmart or I'm not shopping on Amazon. I'm setting up my first shot. Me on this ladder, putting cardboard over the windows to make it all dark. I'm just distressing some of this cardboard to make it look not so new. I sat down with the lyrics. If you knew me then, you don't know me now. I am rewired. Such a powerful line. So the dark entryway, the blue light of the phone causing distress on my face. This, I don't want to be too specific about what is on the phone. You know, we all have these crazy aggressors that can come into our homes via the technology. Whether it's cyberbullying, work stress, someone breaking up with you. I really want that to be, you know, uh, up for interpretation. And I have tons of lights and cameras in the house. The only thing that I'll be buying special are food items. You'll see how those get used. Did we want sweat and tears, baby? Oh, that does not taste good. It's also not good in the eyes. And then, I definitely need more light on my face. I love a spotlight because I can just directionally blast it in my face to balance out the sunlight coming through. Right. That was it. I am rewired. The paper hit the camera, but I'm not doing it again. I think we got it. We can edit around that. Also, I love in the bridge, she talks about from the ashes I rise, you can't stop me. And I think this really kind of comes down to the crux of the song, which is like continual rebirth, the inability to stop one's spirit. And that's a story that I'm always very excited to tell because it's relatable to everyone in the world. We all are the main characters in our own story. And I wanted that to be the message of my video as well. Perhaps it was meant to be the message of Gabby's, but again, the visuals are too simple. She's switches outfits and she has the same makeup on and she has like the clown pants. I can't. So the final theme is really about that drive and determination where it's still hard to form new habits. I think about not just drug and alcohol addictions, but like food, TV, work, love, sex. It's like some of them, they can't be just gotten rid of, right? You have to work on finding balance and moderation. Carving out new neural pathways actually takes a lot of bravery and strength and energy. So I want to kind of be able to show that journey in a confined space like Gabby's doing to really emulate the spirit of what I think she's trying to say in her song. Okay, I'm happy. Let's move on. We're done with all of the window stuff, <sighs> which means we're basically done with having to worry about the sunlight. I'm talking too much. This is all supposed to be B-roll. You can see why I'm trying to shoot this first because the sun's never gonna be on this side of the building today. I know the title of this video is probably I made a better video than Gabby Hanna in 24 hours. And that is obviously a matter of opinion. I'm really just trying to make it mine by recording the vocals and adding my own twist to the audio. It's to me a little bit more transformative and I'm doing this as a manner of educating people on my process and for commentary. So it makes it all feel more holistically fair use. Not because I thought I'm a better singer than Gabby as you'll hear. because she has two verses, three choruses, and one bridge. I think Gabby might be overestimating her audience's attention span. I'm taking out one verse and one chorus, keeping my raw footage organized. It's going to save me so much time later. The things I learned being 20. I want there to be a distinguishable story. It's not that I don't think there was a story to what she's doing here. I believe there was probably meaning behind her face paint and the costume choices, but I could also put up a camera in my bedroom, as I will in a second, and do a bunch of stuff on camera and then explain like, oh, that means this or that. But if it feels like you could have just come up with it in 10 minutes, it's not that special, you know? So symbolically, I feel this song really at its core for me is about the idea of making progress and then relapsing back into bad habits. <laughs>
I feel so stupid. <laughs> it's something that I have experience with. So being able to put that on camera excites me and makes me motivated to do this whole video. That's the other thing that I'm pulling out of this is like the more of yourself you infuse into every single shot, the more it feels like you're writing in your journal and coming up with a really exciting, smart, clever, creative way of hiding yourself in everything you show. You'll never be bored at work if you do this. That's how I feel. <laughs> The phone is causing distress. This is the low point. This is me at my worst. Feeling like the whole world can see me and the mistakes that I made. I'm vulnerable. I'm inside. I'm wounded. I feel isolated. So I want to kind of symbolize that sadness and that depression. I have a glass walled shower. I know that this is not new for anybody who's ever shot anything to shoot in a glass walled shower. They do it on TikTok a lot, but I know that I can make it look good, interesting, different, and it feels like it's in line with this stuck in the house thing, but it's like the rain, it's the tears. And honestly, I've had moments where I'm just sitting in the shower crying. So I'm gonna kind of emulate that. Is it gonna be cringy, me pretending to cry on camera? Maybe, also I'll need a performance take where I'm like getting motivated again. So I'll be like looking up and that's gonna be used at the end of the song. But also I have had a difficult relationship with food in my life, using food to manage my feelings. I just got back and I got so many of the perfect groceries for this food scene. I only spent $96, which is a lot for junk food, but I had to pick some of it for the packaging. So I'm gonna set up the frame, and I'll set up a camera, then I'll throw in the lights, and then I'll do my makeup, which I really don't wanna do. But I know it's gonna look sick if I have like beautiful makeup for this. All right, I think I found a good frame that's gonna let me decorate and still look good. And I wanna look small in front of this bridge and not be blocking the whole thing. I can bring the fire. I'm using that as the literal example in this just because I feel like gluttony is something that I can show in a way that's really visual. I have an idea for out in front of my fridge, basically reveling in excess. It happens a lot in art direction where you need to make something look full like this bowl of ice cream. I'm going to prop it up. It's good to have marbles on hand or something washable, but I'm just using these freezer burned blueberries so that way I could take the scoops and just stack them like that and it'll look much more visible on camera. And then I'll add all the sprinkles and whipped cream and stuff on camera because obviously that's super visual and cinematic. We're almost done lighting this setup. Of course I leaned right into my ice cream counter, but I need to get dressed anyway. As expected, everything is harder and taking longer than I expected, but it's fun. Right now I'm just shooting these little inserts like this guy. Shots of like ice cream dripping. I got one already. Those are the kind of details that people want and it'll help me transition from one scene to another. Not me ratcheting the focus on this like I'm Andrew from Shane Dawson. I'm gonna find different ways of showing really visual, messy, hedonistic imagery. It's such a mess in here. Oh my God, cleaning this is gonna be so bad. But this is the project I decided to do this week. This represents crystal meth. Art school. Oh no, this fridge move things around so everything is visible. Okay, this is not a normal way to sit, but this is how I'm doing it for the shot. But then I wanted to quickly descend into like, oh no, gross, don't eat that. I'm so not looking forward to cleaning all of that up. Oh, oh, oh my God. That was so gross. I regret everything about this idea. Oh, oh, why yogurt? Why did I choose yogurt? Oh, it's under my underwear. Oh, it's squishy. Ugh. Cold, cold, cold. Oops, I'm naked. Okay. <laughs> the homeowner would have a fit if he sees this. He won't. I wanted to go from pretty and colorful, like candy coated melted ice cream to like, you just got out of the mud or something, you know? I'm pressing candy up against this window so you can see like sugar and pink stuff in there. So I'm cutting this box apart so that I have two little purple candy things to tape against the window. I'm gonna be cutting between all of these shots and revealing different locations as we go. For example, I don't wanna see this food setup until the first chorus. And then it'll be like, whoa, something new, impactful, unexpected. I wanna surprise the children. I just sucked up two hours trying to figure out something with my camera, but we did it. I'm gonna shoot it in twice the frame rate and lip sync to the song at double speed so that when it's in slow motion, look, look at my test.
I'm gonna grab inserts of camera lenses. And the idea is like this illusion of transparency that I feel with a lot of my internal growth, especially if I make a mistake. When it happens, I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, everyone knows that I'm feeling the shame. That makes it worse. Everyone saw the mistake. Everyone's thinking about it all the time. Everyone's talking about it behind the back. It's like, that's not true, but it can feel that way. And I think that that's probably something Gabby could relate to as well. So it feels true to the song that I, in this video, I'm feeling stressed and vulnerable by all of the camera lenses and all of the people watching me. See how when I'm making a video, I'm not necessarily trying to be 100% literal with everything because that's not super fun to watch. And anything literal you do, we have seen before. So <laughs> by deciding how I'm gonna get from one scene to another even and infusing that with meaning, it provides me with opportunities to show something unique and trust my audience to understand on some level that there's a story here without having to understand exactly what's motivating everything. Although if they asked me, I could explain it to them. I wouldn't be like, I don't know, just thought it would look cool. Make it look cool for a reason. So I think that I lose control here and then I sort of wake up. I'm in front of a camera in like a white room and I want it to feel like more like a hostage video. But I feel like that's a type of visual that people recognize a lot in this day and age. I can correlate it to like, how do you keep it from feeling like the thing that you once loved is now a prison. So that's what I'm trying to get at here. I'll just give you an update. This is exhausting. Um, so while I think I'm proving my point with this challenge about how you can do a lot in 24 hours, I'm not saying this wouldn't have benefited from a little more rest. I'm definitely starting to feel tired. Another shot, another crazy mess. But I think I just shot the hardest, the end of the messy hard stuff. Oh my God, this sucks. <laughs> the addictions are traps to us. These things can be physically limiting. Like I know my addiction physically limited me to my house and surrounding area because I would be like sweating it out in the bed, having the detox sh oh, ah! <laughs> Detox shivers and sweats. <laughs> I said detox put that in your music video, Sunny. So I feel like addiction is a prison and when we can't talk to other people about it, there's a stigma around it, it feels even more isolating and I'm trying to break out of that. So this is the emotional low point. You'll also see at the end, a pretty direct reference to a Trisha Paytas music video. So by the bridge, I'm imprisoned by my issues and I'm on camera. The camera has really got me trapped. Maybe I'm bound up with something, but I don't know, maybe extension cords? We'll come to that when we get there. And before giving up though, I'm gonna look up at the window. I want to make it like a prison looking window, like recluse, like covered up with cardboard, but there's a little piece pulled away and I can see the blue of the sky. And to me, that's like the real me because we are not our emotions. We are not the things that we do, right? So I know who I am. I feel like I've had this moment in a lot of my lowest points where I'm like, this isn't me. There's like this scream in all of the setups where it's like, again, relinquishing control to the fire, bringing the fire, the water of these tears being dried up and evaporated, finally cleansing myself of all of that food, showing myself like taming the tears, learning to live with the anxiety and the sadness, which are also a part of life, ripping down the cardboard, cleaning out the apartment, letting the sunlight in, and basically deciding to re-emerge from the cocoon that I've been in as a healthier, smarter person who has grown from their experience, from the negative. So I think from here where the big reveal is like, I'm in this studio space still, but I'm no longer a hostage. It's sort of gonna represent a sense of liberation. It'll probably like for visuals and I don't know, I think it'll just look cool is like, it'll feel like a Spring Breakers-esque style of like slow motion, revelry, sexualized craziness, you know, and a sense of empowerment as a source of income, as a way of taking control of these things about ourselves. You know, it's like we can put our full selves on display and the more we are ourselves, the better we are showing up for this life. Oh, and also I'm doing a performance take just no story, but with the visual of fire behind me, because I have the fireplace, so that I can always get coverage of me just singing to the microphone, and that'll help me cover up everything, you know, that I don't have enough footage of, and just, it's a visual. You know, it's a nice background. I think I'll be very close on my face. I'm thinking like Adele. There's a fire. I hope it doesn't look too much like that, but we'll see. I've also got lots of color changing LED lights that I'm gonna use to set the mood and give a different color to each of these settings. <sighs> then I'll edit it. And then, here we are. We finished. 
finished. I'm really interested to see how this turns out. I don't believe it's gonna be perfect, but it's what I made. And again, I commend Gabby Hanna for making this song and I hope she appreciates this tribute to her and her work. No way meant to replace it. And thanks for the song, Gabs. So without further ado, hey MTV, it's me, Nick Jeremio, and you're here to check out my video for Rewired featuring Gabby Hanna. Mwah. No copyright intended. Rewired living desire. That song has been stuck in my head so long, but it's catchy, right? And what do you think of my video? I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Although I'm recording this outro before I shot it, I'm sure I had fun doing the whole shebang uh, because I typically love shooting stuff. <laughs> I want to once again thank Gabby Hanna for all of the artwork she's put out there over her career and will continue to do. I'm a big fan, despite the jokes and criticism that I may lob her way. I sort of just do that to everybody. In this life, you can be either a consumer solely or a producer as well. Some people just sort of create content and art as like a byproduct of their daily existence. Even if I weren't making videos for a living, videos would still be leaking out on the internet here and there. I would be taking pictures. I'd be making my own stuff because I just can't help it. So I appreciate Gabby's artistic and creative sensibilities there. And this homemade video inspired me to make her homemade video and maybe hopefully inspired you to try and make songs or music videos yourself. Check out things like Google for if you don't know how to use a program, figure out GarageBand. That's where I re-recorded this stuff. I looked up Gabby's key signature and tempo and then just kind of, you know, figured it out from there. There's YouTube tutorials for literally anything you don't know how to do. So just take it step by step. Hopefully this helped in some way. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Also, I'll upload the music video to my Patreon. So go check out that if you want bonus content, exclusive episodes and virtual watch parties. I also have merch available. Also click that like button if you want to see more clip make down and let me know what creators we should do next. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm making old videos in my kitchen, when I'm pouring shit all over myself in the kitchen. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for getting rewired with me today. I will see you next time.